So CS124 might work a little bit differently than some of the other courses that you're taking this semester. So I want to talk a little bit about how we do things. So this course is structured as a series of daily lessons. There are no synchronous meetings for the class. So there's no Zoom link that you're supposed to join at any given point. Um, we completely rebuilt the class from the ground up for last fall to be delivered in this new format. And here's what we found. It worked. It worked incredibly well. And the reason is actually pretty simple. Because you learn best, there's this concept of spaced repetition. So you learn best when you do a little bit every day rather than a little bit on Monday and then never nothing until the next Monday. Um, so rather than set up like three lecture slots or something like that, we decided, no, no, no. What we want to do is support your learning. So what we're going to do is we're going to break things up into daily lessons. So you do a little bit every day. Um, this also helps with structure, which can be something that we can struggle with a little bit when times are kind of confused and a little bit uncertain like they still are right now. So every day you have a lesson to work through for CS124. You don't have to do that at any particular time. You can fit it into your own schedule depending on what else you're doing that day. You can work on in the morning, you can work on in the afternoon, you can work on in the evening, doesn't matter. Um, that lesson looks a lot like today's. It consists of a mixture of you know, these playgrounds that we use. So this is the Kotlin lesson. Okay, wait, hold on, let me, let me start over. So, so here are the lessons page. Now I'm staff, so I'm able to see more than you will be able to see. Um, and I'm also looking at both the Kotlin and the Java lessons. Once you select a primary language, you'll see the lessons in your primary language, but we'll add an option for you to also view other lessons if you'd like. So some of you that are taking the course in Java may also want to peek at the Kotlin lessons. Some of you that are taking the course in Kotlin may also want to peek at the Java lessons, but you need to do the lessons in your primary language to get credit. Okay, so I'm gonna click on, uh, this is the lesson I'm looking at, so I need to turn this so I don't see some of the missing pieces here that staff see, um, but this is what you're going to see. So we have these little uh, playgrounds that you can interact with and, and run the code in. Uh, that's a big part of what we do. Um, this lesson is instructing you in terms of the different components of the class. So we have videos about our quiz system. Uh, we have a description of how the class works. Um, future lessons will talk about core programming ideas in either the Kotlin or the Java language, depending on which programming language you're taking the class in. Um, so the languages, the, the lessons are designed to meet you on multiple levels. They're highly interactive. They consist of the playgrounds, they consist of text, they consist of these interactive walkthroughs that we, um, that, that, I'll, that I'll talk about. So for example, here's an interactive walkthrough. You click this and now you're listening to me describe, you know, how to how to manipulate this piece of code. Um, so that's an important thing that you wanna also uh, interact with. Actually, there's a lot of really important content in those walkthroughs. So that's probably one of the most important things to look at when you're, when you're going through the lesson. But again, you can't just read the lesson. The text of the lesson does not contain all the content. You need to watch the walkthroughs and then any videos that are embedded in the lesson as well, right? So this is a real multimedia experience, right? We're trying to use different strategies to reach you, right? So you might read about a concept then watch us work through an interactive walkthrough where we actually talk about how to use it in a piece of code. And then later in the lesson, there might be a video that we use when we need to do something graphical or explain a concept or just talk about something, right? Um, so this is how this works. Now, at the end of every lesson, uh, there are a couple of things. So frequently there's a practice problem. These practice problems are not for credit. They're designed for practice. Um, you can attempt them a few times, and then once you've tried the problem a certain number of times, you'll be able to see a solution walkthrough where you watch a staff member solve the problem. Um, now, again, these are not for credit. At the bottom of every lesson, however, there is a problem that you need to do for credit. Now, you won't be able to see the solution walkthrough. Again, I'm able to see this because I'm a staff member. What you'll see is, you know, you'll see the, um, the, the, the content, and you'll see an editor window. And the homework problem is how you know that you've absorbed the lessons that we try to impart in that daily lesson. So if you work top to bottom, you get to the bottom, you do the homework problem. If you can solve the homework problem without a lot of difficulty, you know, you should feel pretty confident that you've learned the material that you need to learn that day. Once you've solved the problem, you'll again see a solution walkthrough where you'll see some, some solutions from staff. I would encourage you to watch at least one of those because sometimes there are other ways of solving the problem that you might not have thought, right? But this is how we do things. So every day 
You go to the lesson page, there'll be a new lesson available. You work from top to bottom. You get to the bottom, do the homework problem, you're done. Every Tuesday, there's a quiz. So completing the homework problems is 30% of your grade. The weekly quizzes are 40% of your grade. And then about halfway through the semester, we're going to start you working on a larger programming project in Android, actually. We're going to build an Android app together. That's sort of half homework, half tutorial, where we'll be showing you about how to do things and then also having pieces for you to complete. Um, the app that we're using this year is coming together. It seems pretty cool. Uh, we'll talk more about that later in the semester. But that's how you do CS124. There are no, it just again, I, I know that like this is weird, right? It's like we're, we, you know, everyone else is like, okay, well, where's my lecture Zoom? Like, where do I go? No, no, no. This is all online right now. Um, you come to the website, you do the daily lesson, you get stuck, jump on the help site, open every day, um, or get on the forum, ask a question, work through the walkthroughs. Uh, watch the videos, get to the bottom, do the homework problem, you're golden, come back the next day. Weekends you have off, uh, you come back on Monday and we start again, right? By doing a little bit every day, you will learn more this semester than you could possibly have imagined. Trust us, right? We've done this for an entire year. Originally, yes, this was a little bit of something that we did to accommodate the pandemic, but it turns out that it you learn a lot better this way. You learn a lot better when you do a little bit every day. You're building new circuits in your brain. That takes time, that takes energy, and you get tired quickly. So you come back every day, you kind of rebuild some new circuits, come back, we'll reinforce them the next day. You keep doing that day in, day out, throughout the entire semester. And by the end of the semester, you'll be astonished by how much you've learned over the 15 weeks that we have together. So that's how we do this. Um, Daily lessons, daily practice, uh, weekly quiz, and then again, we'll talk a little bit later in the semester about the, the larger programming project. At the beginning of this, I just want to say a brief word about COVID, which is not gone yet, still with us. Um, this is a big class, and we are very cognizant of the need to try to keep people safe. We will start the semester fully online, so the help site will be the way to get help. In the past, we have run in-person office hours. We will start doing that as soon as we think it is safe. We have one room in the basement of the Siebel Center. It's poorly ventilated and office hours require, our tutoring hours, excuse me, require bringing large numbers of people into close contact with each other, which is not particularly safe to do right now. I'm hoping that by midway through the semester when we release the project, and that's the point where some of you start to need more help, we will be able to resume that in-person activity. And so in addition to the help site, if you want to come to Siebel, to the basement, to sit at you know a table and chair near other students in the class and work on your assignment together, you'll be able to do that. Um, but for now, uh, everything that we're doing is online. And trust me, again, we have been tremendously successful in this format. This is not like a watered down, dumbed down, you know, version of the class. This is a actually a much better version of the class than the one that we were teaching in person before. I hope that we'll be able to add a little bit of an in-person component to it, but until we're through this next spike and until we see what happens at the beginning of the semester, we don't feel comfortable and the staff doesn't feel comfortable. And I don't think you should feel comfortable engaging in that type of close quarters contact. So we'll see. Um, we'll keep you informed about that as things go, but also keep in mind this course works incredibly well online. The last year was the most effective this class has ever been in terms of the amount that students learned, in terms of you know different health metrics that we monitor. Uh, this course works online in this format. It's incredibly novel. It's incredibly new. I don't think anyone else on campus is really doing anything quite like this. Um, we made a big investment in the technology, in the structure, in the problems, in the systems that we use to help you. And that investment is paying off, right? This is technology changing the world. I mean, you guys are signing up for a class so that you can learn how to do things that will improve the world around you. We took those lessons and we applied them to this course over the past year, and we were able to do something really special. And I think you'll benefit from that this semester as well. So all to say, welcome. Come back tomorrow, there'll be another lesson. Come back the day after that, there'll be another lesson. There are no, other than your weekly Zoom session where you take your quiz, there are no other synchronous meetings for this class. And like I said, we'll keep you updated when it comes to COVID and our ability to resume in-person tutoring hours.